Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to lecture number 20 of the course on statistics and probability. You will recall that in the last lecture, I discussed with you the relative frequency definition of probability. And then we went on to the axiomatic definition, which is the most mathematical definition of probability. After that, we discussed two laws of probability. The first one was the law of complementation, according to which probability of A bar is equal to 1 minus the probability of A. And after that, I discussed with you the general addition theorem of probability. Today, we will begin with some examples to illustrate the general addition theorem. As you remember, according to this theorem, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. In other words, the probability that at least one of the two events A and B occurs is equal to the probability of the first plus the probability of the second minus the probability that both of them occur. Let us apply this to a simple example. As you now see on the screen, suppose that one card is selected at random from a deck of 52 playing cards and suppose that we are interested in finding the probability that the card is a club or a face card or both. Jaisa ke aapko yaad hoga, club yani chidiya jo hai, ke tera pahe hai, aur face card se murad hai, wo tamam cards ke upar tasaweer bani ho hai. So, we have a jack and a king and a queen for spades, for hearts, for diamonds, and for clubs. Lehaza, 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 gives us 12 face cards. In this example, in order to compute the probability that this one card that I have selected, it is either a club or a face card or both, sabse pehle note karne ki baat yehi hai ki ye jo do events hain, a face card and a club, these are not mutually exclusive. Yani, ye is tarah ke events nahi hain, ke agar ek in mein se akar kar raha hai, to dousra akar nahi kar sakta. After all, agar aapka patta chidiya ka baadsha ho, to aap note karenge ke iske andar ye dono events um, zahur pazir ho rahe hain. Woh chidiya ka patta hai, aur chunke woh baadsha hai, is liye woh face card bhi hai. Now, since they are not mutually exclusive, therefore we are going to apply the general addition theorem, which is valid for such cases. And according to this theorem, if I may repeat it once again, the probability of A union B is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B minus the probability of A intersection B. So, it is obvious that in order to apply this theorem, the first thing to do is to uh, denote one of the two events of my interest by A and the other by B. Agar is example mein, hum face card ko A keh de, aur club ko B keh de, to hamara masla hal, hal ho jayega. Of course, hum iske opposite bhi baat kar sakte hai. We can say that uh, club represents the event A and face card is represented by the event B. So that is totally up to you. Now, if we have taken this decision that A represents club and B represents face card, ab hume inki probabilities compute karni hai. Aapko pata hi hai ke according to the classical definition, it is M over N, favorable over the total. Um, us pure deck ke andar tera patte hai club ke. Lehaza, the probability of A, the probability of clubs is 13 over 52. Similarly, as I have told you a little bit earlier, the ustaj ke pure deck ke andar 12 adad face cards hain. So, the probability of face card, that is probability of B, 
इज 12 ओवर 52 और तीसरा जो हमें कंप्यूट करना है दैट इज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ द जॉइंट इवेंट ए इंटरसेक्शन बी यानी ये इवेंट के वो क्लब का भी पत्ता है और फेस कार्ड भी है तो जैसे पहले कहा कि अगर क्लब का किंग uh, या क्लब की क्वीन और या क्लब ही का जैक अगर आप इन तीनों पत्तों को कंसिडर करें तो आपका ये जॉइंट इवेंट अगर हो रहा है कि वो पत्ता फेस कार्ड भी है और वो पत्ता क्लब का भी है चूंकि ये तीन अदद हैं लिहाजा द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर इवेंट इज थ्री ओवर फिफ्टी टू अब हम ये सारी क्वांटिटीज अपने इस फॉर्मूले के अंदर सब्सिट्यूट कर देंगे एंड एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वी विल ऑप्टेन प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी इज इक्वल टू थर्टीन ओवर फिफ्टी टू प्लस ट्वेल्व ओवर फिफ्टी टू माइनस थ्री ओवर फिफ्टी टू दैट इज ट्वेंटी टू ओवर फिफ्टी टू इन अदर वर्ड्स द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट इफ आई ड्रॉ वन कार्ड आउट ऑफ अ डेक ऑफ कार्ड इट विल आई दर बी अ क्लब और अ फेस कार्ड और बोथ दिस प्रॉबिलिटी इज इक्वल टू ट्वेंटी टू ओवर फिफ्टी टू विच इज लेस दैन फिफ्टी परसेंट स्टूडेंट्स अब आइए इसी जनरल एडिशन थेरम का स्पेशल केस कंसिडर करते हैं सपोज दैट द टू इवेंट्स दैट वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट दे आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव यानी वो इस कस्म के हैं कि अगर उनमें से एक अकर कर रहा है तो दूसरा अकर नहीं कर रहा इस केस में यू विल अप्रीशिएट एंड अग्री विद मी दैट द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ द जॉइंट इवेंट ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इज जीरो इसलिए कि जब वो जॉइंट इवेंट अकर ही नहीं कर सकता तो जाहिर है कि इट इज एन इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट एंड इफ इट इज एन इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट देन द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ एन इम्पॉसिबल इवेंट इज जीरो वॉट हैपन्स इन दिस केस इज दैट इन आवर फॉर्मूला ऑफ द जनरल एडिशन थेरम द थर्ड टर्म बिकम्स जीरो एंड आवर फॉर्मूला रिड्यूसिस टू अ वेरी सिंपल फॉर्म एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी इज इक्वल टू प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए प्लस द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी एंड स्टूडेंट्स इज दिस नॉट एग्जैक्टली द सेम स्टेटमेंट दैट यू रेड एज द थर्ड एग्जियम ऑफ द एग्जियोमैटिक डेफिनेशन ऑफ प्रॉबिलिटी लेट इस नाउ अप्लाई दिस टू अ सिंपल एग्जाम्पल एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन सपोज दैट वी आर टॉसिंग अ पेयर ऑफ डाइज एंड वी आर इंटरेस्टेड इन द इवेंट दैट वी गेट अ टोटल ऑफ फाइव और अ टोटल ऑफ इलेवन इस सिचुएशन में स्टूडेंट्स आप देख रहे हैं कि दीज टू इवेंट्स आर म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव वाई इसलिए कि ऐसा तो नहीं हो सकता ना कि आप दो डाइज फेंकें और आप कहें कि इसका टोटल फाइव भी है और इलेवन भी है इट कांट हैपन एट द सेम टाइम आई दर इट विल बी अ टोटल ऑफ फाइव और इट मे बी अ टोटल ऑफ इलेवन सो इन दिस सिचुएशन वी विल अप्लाई द स्पेशल केस ऑफ द एडिशन थेरम probability of a union b is equal to probability of a plus the probability of b agar hum total of 5 ko a se denote kare to ab sochne ki baat ye hai ki wo kon kon se outcomes hain is experiment ke jo is particular event ko favor karte hain dekhiye 36 possible jo outcome hain unme se 1 4 2 3 3 2 एंड फोर वन ये चार आउटकम्स हैं विच आर फेवरिंग दिस इवेंट दैट द टोटल ऑफ द टू इज फाइव और अगर हम इसी नंबर फोर को थर्टी सिक्स से डिवाइड करें तो फोर बाई थर्टी सिक्स या वन ओवर नाइन दिस इज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट आई विल गेट अ टोटल ऑफ फाइव अब इलेवन की बात कीजिए इलेवन तो दो ही तरीकों से हासिल हो सकता है either you have a 5 6 or you have a 6 5 and when we divide this number 2 by 36 we get the probability of getting a total of 11 as 2 by 36 is event ko total of 11 ko agar hum b se represent kare 
तो प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी इज टू बाई थर्टी सिक्स और वन बाई एटीन लेकिन हम तो इंटरेस्टेड थे इस बात में कि वी गेट अ टोटल ऑफ फाइव और अ टोटल ऑफ इलेवन सो अकॉर्डिंग टू दी थेरम द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए यूनियन बी द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ फाइव यूनियन इलेवन द प्रॉबिलिटी दट आई गेट अ फाइव और एन इलेवन इज इक्वल टू फोर बाई थर्टी सिक्स प्लस टू बाई थर्टी सिक्स एंड दैट इज सिक्स बाई थर्टी सिक्स और सिक्सटीन पॉइंट सिक्स सेवन परसेंट दिस एडिशन थेरम फॉर द केस ऑफ म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स कैन बी एक्सटेंडेड टू एनी नंबर ऑफ म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन इफ ए वन ए टू सो ऑन अप टू ए के आर के म्यूचुअली एक्सक्लूसिव इवेंट्स then the probability that one of them occurs that is either a1 occurs or a2 occurs or so on ak occurs is given by the sum of the probabilities of the separate events that is probability of a1 plus the probability of a2 plus so on up to probability of ak शायद आप सोच रहे हों कि अभी तक हम जो एग्जाम्पल्स हमने डिस्कस किए दीज आर वेरी वेरी सिंपल एग्जाम्पल्स तो फिर ऐसा क्यों है कि प्रॉबिलिटी को सबसे ज़्यादा मुश्किल सब्जेक्ट समझा जाता है जैसे इससे ज़्यादा मुश्किल तो कोई सब्जेक्ट ही नहीं है कोई टॉपिक ही नहीं है एक्चुअली इट इज़ ट्रू दैट समटाइम्स द प्रॉबिलिटी प्रॉब्लम्स कैन बी क्वाइट ट्रिकी लेकिन जैसे मैंने काफ़ी पहले आपसे कहा था कि ऑल यू नीड is uh, first of all a methodological approach aap ek systematic tarike se usko approach karne ki koshish kare to inshallah aap kafi usme progress kar sakenge aur ain mumkin hai ki aap uske solution tak kafi aasani ke sath pahunch jaye i would like to now discuss with you an interesting example to illustrate this point that what might appear difficult in the beginning uh, may not be that difficult as you now see on the screen suppose that three horses a b and c are in a race a is twice as likely to win as b and b is twice as likely to win as c what is the probability that in a particular race either a wins or b wins students aapne note kiya ki ye kafi interesting sa problem lag raha hai pehli baat to ye dekhiye ki a is twice as likely to win as b and b is twice as likely to win as c it is then obvious that the events that a wins or b wins or c wins these events are not equally likely or classical definition jo aapne pehle पढ़ी है दैट इज वैलिड ओनली इफ द वेरियस आउटकम्स आर इक्वली लाइकली तो इस प्रॉब्लम में इस प्रॉब्लम को हम किस तरह से अप्रोच करेंगे एज यू नाउ सी ऑन द स्क्रीन वॉट वी कैन डू इज टू डिनोट द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट सी विन्स बाय स्मॉल पी एंड इफ वी डू दैट देन द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट बी विन्स इज इक्वल टू टू पी because b is twice as likely to win as c similarly the probability that a wins will be equal to two times the probability of b winning and that is equal to two times 2p in other words 4p in this problem we are assuming that no two of the horses a b and c can win the race together that is the race cannot end in a draw and if we make this assumption then of course the events a b and c are mutually exclusive either a will win or b will win or c will win but they cannot win together since a b and c are mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive 
Therefore, the sum of their probabilities must be equal to 1. And applying this condition, we obtain p plus 2p plus 4p equal to 1. In other words, 7p is equal to 1 or p is equal to 1 by 7. But if p represents the probability that c wins. So, we have the probability of C winning equal to 1 by 7. The probability of B winning equal to 2 times 1 by 7 and that is 2 by 7. And the probability that A wins comes out to be 4 times 1 by 7 that is 4 by 7. Individual probabilities to humne is tarah se compute kar li. Yani 1 by 7, 2 by 7 and 4 by 7. Aur aapne note kiya ke wo jo pehli shart thi ke A is twice as likely to win as B and B is twice as likely to win as C. Wo iske andar cover ho rahi. 4 by 7 is double of 2 by 7 and 2 by 7 is double of 1 by 7. Lekin students... Hamara question to ye tha ke what is the probability that either A wins or B wins. Aur chunke hum ye assumption kar hi chuke hain ke these events are mutually exclusive. Koi se do horses ikatthe win nahi kar sakte. To phir zahir hai ke we will apply the special case of the addition theorem. As you now see on the screen, the probability of A is equal to the probability of A plus the probability of B that is 4 by 7 plus 2 by 7 and that is equal to 6 by 7. Alright, addition theorem ko to hamne kafi detail mein discuss kar liya. The next theorem that we will be discussing is the multiplication theorem. But students, before I can proceed to the multiplication theorem, I will be discussing with you and I need to discuss with you the concept of conditional probability. Ye conditional probability se meri kya murad hai? Dekhye, aisa hai ke humare random experiment ki jo sample space hai, the set of all possible outcomes relating to our random experiment, if we have some additional information pertaining to that experiment, the sample space will change and it will reduce by eliminating certain elements as being impossible, which were considered possible prior to our having received this additional information. Friend tells you that the die has landed on the floor and it is an even number. Ye to unhone aapko bata diya ke it is an even number. Lekin interest is mein hai ke you get a 6. Because if you get a 6, then you will be proceeding further in the game. Now, having this information that the number that has occurred on the die is an even number, this is that additional information, that information that will reduce my sample space. Agar is kusam ki information na hoti, so, zahir hai ke hum kehte ke hamari sample space ke andar 6 uh, possible outcomes hain. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. Lekin ab jab ye information hume hasil hai ke the number that has occurred on the die is an even number. To phir saaf zahir hai ke 1, 3 or 5 wo to ab usme uh, baqi nahi rahe. It is not possible to have a 1, 3 or a 5 with this information that it is an even number. So as you now see on the screen, the sample points 1, 3 and 5 are eliminated as being impossible and our sample space is reduced to only 3 sample points 2, 4 and 6. With this reduced sample space, students, if I am interested in computing the probability that I get a 6, then the 
total number of outcomes is only three. It is no longer six. And the outcomes that, which are favoring what I want, that is only one, the six itself. So according to the classical definition of probability, m over n, is case may meri jo probability aegi, that is going to be one over three. Agar ye information hasil na hoti, then the probability of getting a six would have been one over six. As you now see on the screen, the probability that you get a six, given that the number is an even number, is equal to one over three. Isme aap ye note ki jiye, ke jo slash dala jata hai, that is read as given that. Or slash ke baad wohi event likha jata hai, jis ki information aap ko hasil hai. If we denote the occurrence of a 6 by A and the occurrence of an even number by B, then this probability will be denoted by P of A given B. Students, aap shayad soch rahe hoon ke iska naam rakha gaya hai ke it is conditional probability. और जो मैंने अभी सारी एक्सप्लेनेशन दी उसमें तो कंडीशन या कंडीशनल का लफ्ज नहीं था बट यू सी इट इज क्वाइट सिंपल आप इसको यूं इंटरप्रेट करें दैट द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट ए अकर्स गिवन दैट बी हैज ऑलरेडी अकर्ड इज इक्वल टू सो मच तो इसको हम इस तरह भी तो कह सकते हैं ना कि द प्रोबेबिलिटी दैट ए अकर्स अंडर द कंडीशन that the event B has already occurred. So this is why we have this term, conditional probability. Achha, agli baat ye ke jo jis tarah se mene explain kiya, jo iska bunyadi concept hai, wo to yehi hai. Ke aapki sample space reduce ho jati hai by eliminating certain elements which now become impossible in the availability of this information that we have. But sometimes, students, it is not very convenient to compute a conditional probability by first determining that reduced sample space in which we have to then compute our probability. So there is an alternative procedure to compute any conditional probability. And without going into the details of the proof, I will simply uh, convey to you that formula. As you now see on the screen, the probability of A given B is equal to the probability of A intersection B divided by the probability of B. And this formula is subject to the condition that probability of B is greater than 0. Ab is formula may note karne ki baat ye hai कि अगर हम इस तरीके से कंडीशनल प्रोबेबिलिटी निकालना चाहें तो इस फॉर्मूले का जो न्यूमरेटर है और जो इसका डिनोमिनेटर है दे आर बोथ अनकंडीशनल और सिंपल प्रोबेबिलिटीज दे विल बी कंप्यूटेड नॉट इन द रिड्यूस्ड सैंपल स्पेस बट इन द ओरिजिनल सैंपल स्पेस और दूसरा पॉइंट जो नोट करने का है वो ये है कि मैंने आपसे कहा कि इसका जो डिनोमिनेटर है प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी that should be greater than zero. Why? Because if it is equal to zero, then of course this expression will uh, not be a finite quantity. As you know, anything over zero is equal to infinity. Or less than zero to zahira ki probability ho hi nahi sakti. So this is the formula. Now let us apply this formula to the same example that we considered a short while ago. A represents the event that the die shows a 6. B represents the event that the die is an even number. So numerator jo hai, probability of A intersection B, is ka matlab hai ki we are talking about the joint event that it is a 6 and it is an even number. So bhai, aisa to ek hi siraf outcome hai, jo even number bhi hai or 6 bhi hai. And that is 6 only, 6 ke ilawa aur koi aisa outcome nahi hai, jo even number bhi ho 
और सिक्स बी हो सो so, न्यूमरेटर जो है प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी उसकी कॉम्पिटेशन जब हम करेंगे बाय द सिंपल फार्मूला एम ओवर एन तो हम क्या हमें मिलेगा वन ओवर सिक्स इसलिए कि एक ही आउटकम है फेवरेबल टू द जॉइंट इवेंट ए इंटरसेक्शन बी और टोटल छः आउटकम्स हैं व्हेन यू थ्रो द डाई तो ये तो तय हुआ कि न्यूमरेटर हमारा है वन ओवर सिक्स नाउ लेट अस कंसंट्रेट ऑन द डिनोमिनेटर वो तो और भी ज़्यादा आसान है डिनोमिनेटर इज प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी एंड बी डिनोट्स द इवेंट दैट द डाई शोज एन इवन नंबर अब जाहिर है कि एक डाई में टोटल छः आउटकम्स हैं और उनमें से तीन इवन नंबर्स हैं टू फोर एंड सिक्स लिहाजा अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्लासिकल डेफिनेशन वंस अगेन एम ओवर एन थ्री बाय सिक्स तो अब वेन वी डिवाइड द न्यूमरेटर वन बाय सिक्स बाय द डिनोमिनेटर थ्री बाय सिक्स वट डू वी गेट वन बाय थ्री एक्सैक्टली द सेम रिजल्ट दैट वी हैड a short while ago when we solved the same question through the concept of the reduced sample space let me now illustrate the application of this formula of conditional probability with the help of another example a man tosses two fair dice what is the conditional probability that the sum of the two dice will be 7 given that number 1 the sum is greater than 6 and number 2 the two dice had the same outcome now students in order to solve this problem the first thing to note is that the sample space for this experiment consists of the following 36 equally likely outcomes 1 1 1 2 1 3 One four and so on, up to six four, six five, and six six. Now let A denote the event that the sum of the two dice is seven. Then obviously, A will consist of the ordered pairs one six, two five, three four, four three, five two. एंड सिक्स वन और ये सब ऑर्डर पेयर्स इसमें क्यों शामिल होंगे इसलिए कि इनमें से किसी को भी आप उठा लीजिए यू नोट दैट द सम इज इक्वल टू सेवन सो द टोटल नंबर ऑफ ऑर्डर पेयर्स फॉर द सेट ए इज इक्वल टू सिक्स एंड देर फोर द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट द सम इज सेवन इन अदर वर्ड्स द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए इज इक्वल टू Six by thirty-six. Similarly, let B denote the event that the sum is greater than six. Then, students, we will have in the set B all those ordered pairs whose sum is greater than six. Or if you count them, you will see that their total number is eighteen. Therefore, the probability that the sum is greater than six is eighteen. Therefore, the probability of this particular event is equal to 21 by 36 also let us denote by c the event that the two dice have the same outcome students aap jante hain ke un 36 outcomes mein se 6 aise hain jin mein both dice have the same number and they are 11 Two two, three three, four four, five five, and six six. So the total number of such ordered pairs is six, and hence the probability of this particular event is equal to six by thirty six. All right, students. हमने probability of B or probability of C or probability of A. ये सब की सब कंप्यूट कर ली लेकिन हम इंटरेस्टेड थे इस प्रॉब्लम में इन फाइंडिंग द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए गिवन बी एंड द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए गिवन सी एंड 
let us now consider them one by one. In order to find probability of A given B, we first need to find probability of A intersection B. Because in the formula that we wish to apply, you know that this expression occurs in the numerator. So for this purpose, what we should do is to first of all determine the number of ordered pairs that belong to this particular event. The event A intersection B, which represents the event that the sum of the two dice is 7 and that the sum is greater than 6. So students, a um, very interesting point is that those six ordered pairs which represent the event A, represent karte hain, wohi a intersection B ko bhi represent karte hain. Kyu? Isliye ke hum keh rahe hain ke A intersection B ke hum baat kar rahe hain. Yani sum 7 ho aur sum 6 se bada ho. To dekhiye, ye dono baate hain bayak vakt to tab hi ho sakti hai na ke hum wohi wale ordered pairs le le jinka sum 7 hai. Wo sahir hai ke sum 7 bhi hume mil jayega aur wo condition bhi puri ho jayegi that the sum is greater than 6. All right, because of this uh, discussion, we agree that the total number of ordered pairs in the set A intersection B is 6, and therefore the probability of A intersection B is equal to 6 by 36. Now, applying the formula, probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B, we obtain 6 by 36 divided by 21 by 36 and that is equal to 2 by 7. And students, this is the conditional probability that we will have a sum of 7 given that the sum is greater than 6. The other part of the question was that what is the conditional probability that the sum is 7 given that the two dice showed the same number to students is case may first of all we will be wanting to find probability of a intersection c which has to occur in the numerator of our formula now the most interesting and important point is that A intersection C is equal to phi and that is the null set. And why is this? The reason is that none of the six ordered pairs 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4, 5, 5 and 6, 6, none of them is such whose sum is 7. Therefore, a intersection C is a null set and hence the total number of ordered pairs in this set is zero. And this means that the probability of A intersection C is equal to zero by 36, which is the same thing as zero. And now substituting the values zero and six by 36 in the formula of probability of A given C, students, it is obvious that this particular conditional probability comes out to be zero. So this is the procedure by which we can compute conditional probabilities using the formula probability of the joint event over probability of the conditioning event. Students, um, you should note the point that conditional probability satisfies all those basic axioms that you studied in the axiomatic definition of probability. As you now see on the screen, probability of A given B lies between 0 and 1. Probability of S given B is equal to 1. And probability of A1 union A2 given B is equal to probability of A1 given B plus 
the probability of A2 given B, provided that the events A1 and A2 are mutually exclusive. Shayad aap soch rahe ho ke dice or coins or is tarah ke example bahut se ho gaye. Lekin hum real life mein kitni mertaba dice ya coin toss karte hain. Students, let us apply this concept of conditional probability to a more realistic example. Suppose that at a certain elementary school in a western country, the school record of the past 10 years shows that 75% of the students come from a two-parent home and 20% of the students are low achievers and belong to two-parent homes. What is the probability that such a randomly selected student will be a low achiever given that he or she has come from a two-parent home? Now, in this problem ki statement, we have noted that we are saying what is the probability that a student will be a low achiever given the information that he or she has come from a two parent home. This statement is not saying that we are talking about conditional probability. Now, how am I going to solve this problem? It's fairly simple. Aap wohi formula apply kijiye. All you have to do is to denote one of the events by A and the other one by B. And if you want to apply this form of the formula, probability of A given B is equal to so and so, then it is obvious ke us event ko aap A kahenge jis ki probability aap nikalna chahte hain. Because that is the event that will be written before the slash. And you will say that the event will be B, which you have received the information about it, because that is the event that will be written after the slash. So, as you now see on the screen, we will let A denote a low achiever and B a student coming from a two-parent home. Applying the relative frequency definition of probability, we have probability of V equal to 0.75 and probability of A intersection B equal to 0.20. Shayad aap ye soch rahe ho ke abhi pichle question mein toh hum classical definition se kar rahe the, ab yaha pe achanak yaka yak relative frequency definition kaha se aage? But students, शायद आपको याद हो कि मैंने पिछले लेक्चर में आपसे डिटेल में ये बात डिस्कस की थी कि रियल वर्ल्ड सिचुएशंस में मोर ऑफ़न देन नॉट वी आर गोइंग टू बी अप्लाइंग द रिलेटिव फ्रीक्वेंसी डेफिनेशन ऑफ़ प्रोबेबिलिटी। आफ्टर ऑल इस क्वेश्चन में क्वेश्चन की स्टेटमेंट क्या थी? इट वाज नोन दैट इन � two parent homes and 20% of the students are such who are low achievers and belong to two parent homes. Ye ek proportion hi diya gaya na aapko. Aur pichle lecture ki roo se aapko yaad hoga ki agar aapka sample size large ho to wo jo proportion hota hai usi ko hum treat karte hain as the probability of that event. So, the point is, students, that you need to link up all the various concepts with each other. Jab bhi aap koi nea concept padhe, to pichle concepts ko apne saath rakhe, aur dekhe ke kis tarha kadi se kadi milti chali jati hai, and everything falls into place. Coming back to this example, the probability that a student comes from a two-parent home is 0.75. The probability that a student is a low achiever and comes from a two-parent home is 0.20. And according to the formula of conditional probability, the probability 
that a student will be a low achiever given the information that he comes from a two parent home is equal to 0 0.20 divided by 0 0.75. In other words, this probability is equal to 0 0.27. All right, let us now talk about the multiplication theorem of probability. And students, you will be happy to note that it is extremely easy to arrive at the formula of the multiplication law from the formula of conditional probability. As you now see on the screen, the formula of conditional probability is probability of A given B is equal to probability of A intersection B divided by probability of B and if we bring this term which is in the denominator to the other side, we obtain the multiplication theorem that is probability of A intersection B can be written as probability of B multiplied by probability of A given B. But if we interchange the role of A and B, then the multiplication theorem can also be written as probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B given A provided that probability of A is greater than 0. Students, ye jo theorem maine abhi aapke samne present kiya, it is called the general rule of multiplication and it can be stated as follows. The probability that two events A and B will both occur is equal to the probability that one of the events will occur multiplied by the conditional probability that the other event occurs given that the first event has already occurred. The probability of the joint event A intersection B is equal to the probability of A into the probability of B given A. Let us apply this to a simple example. A box contains 15 items, four of which are defective and 11 are good. Two items are selected. What is the probability that the first is good and the second Defective students, आपने note किया कि अभी जो हमने problem present किया इसमें statement ये है कि what is the probability that the first item selected is good and the second is defective? ये जो loves and है this indicates that we are talking about the joint event A intersection B where A represents the event that the first item selected is good and B represents the event that the second item selected is defective. Yani, crux of the matter is K and ka jo loves hai, that will indicate to you that we are talking about the joint event and we are talking about the multiplication theorem of probability. So, how do we compute this particular probability? Let us denote the first event that is that the first item that we select is good by A and the event that the second item that we select is defective by B. Next, let us consider the total number of items that we have and the various kinds of items that we have. As you now see on the screen, we have four defective items and 11 good items in the beginning of the experiment so that the total number of items is 15. Since the selection of the items is totally at random, therefore, all the items are equally likely to be chosen. And hence, according to the classical definition of probability, the probability of the event A is equal to 11 over 15. The reason being that there are 15 ways of selecting one item out of 15. And there are 11 ways of selecting one good item 
out of 11. Yani, the total number of possible outcomes is 15. The total number of ways in which I can select one item out of 15 is 15. But the number of outcomes which are favorable to what I want, that is a good item, that number is 11. So, according to the classical definition, m over n, it is very simple, 11 over 15. Ab ye to hui probability of A, where A represents the event that the first item that I select is good. So, ali peda hota hai, ke once we have done this first part of the experiment, what is the situation after that? Aap note ki jiye, ke ye pehla item hamne nikal kar bahar phenk diya, to ab to hamare us box mein, sirf 14 item baaki reh gaye. Or agar wo pehla item jo humne nikala, that was a good one, to iska matlab hai ki wo jo 11 good items the, unhi mein se ek bahar nikla, aur humare paas box mein 10 good item baaki bache hain. Yani, as you now see on the screen, the situation that we have now is that the total number of items is 14, and the number of items that are good is 10, but the number of items that are faulty is 4. Therefore, the probability of selecting a defective item after a good item has been selected is 4 over 14. Ye quantity 4 by 14, ye to, again it is very simple, m over n. Ab total 14 items hain aur unme se 4 hain which are defective. But students, the point that I would like you to note is that this particular probability is not an unconditional but a conditional probability. After all, this is the probability that the second item that I select is defective given that the first item that I selected was good. And what am I interested in computing overall in this problem? The probability that the first is good and the second is defective. So, according to the multiplication theorem of probability, probability of A intersection B is equal to probability of A into probability of B given A and that is equal to 11 over 15 into 4 by 14. And it comes out to be 0 0.16. Let us now consider an example which illustrates the application of the addition theorem in conjunction with the multiplication theorem of probability. Suppose that a card is drawn at random from a deck of ordinary playing cards what is the probability that it is a diamond, a face card, or a king? Now students, in order to solve this question, let us denote by A the event that the card drawn is a diamond, and let B denote the event that the card is a face card, and let C be the event that the card is a king. Now what we need to find is probability of A union B union C. Iski wajah kya hai? Students, A union B union C ka matlab hai that either A occurs or B occurs or C occurs or any two of them occur simultaneously or all three of them occur simultaneously. Agar aap set theory ki roo se union ke bunyadi concept pe ghor karein, to aap agree karenge ke A union B union C ka yahi mafoom banta hai, jo mene abhi present kiya. Now, the addition theorem in the case of three events is given as probability of A union B union C is equal to probability of A plus the probability of B, plus the probability of C, 
minus the probability of A intersection B minus the probability of B intersection C minus the probability of A intersection C plus the probability of A intersection B intersection C. Students, this lengthy equation is simply an extension of the general addition theorem that you studied in the case of two events A and B. And if you look at this, तो आप देखेंगे कि इसका जो पैटर्न है वो उस पिछले वाले के पैटर्न से काफ़ी मिलता जुलता है नाउ इन ऑर्डर टू अप्लाई दिस फार्मूला वी नीड टू फाइंड प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी एंड ऑल दीज अदर प्रॉबिलिटीज दैट वी हैव इन द राइट हैंड साइड ऑफ दिस इक्वेजन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वॉट इज प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए it is equal to 13 over 52 the reason being that a represents the event that the card is a card of diamond and as you all know there are 13 cards of diamond in a deck of cards and therefore according to the simple formula m over n the probability of getting a diamond is equal to 13 over 52 b represents the event that the card is a face card jack queen and king aur aap jante hain ke chidiya hukam paan aur eent in charo mein we have a jack and a queen and a king so 3 plus 3 plus 3 plus 3 is equal to 12 and therefore the probability of b is equal to 12 over 52 Now C represents the event that the card is a king and we have in our deck of cards a king of spade a king of diamond a king of heart and a king of club therefore we have four kings in all and hence the probability of C is equal to 4 over 52 Now students in order to find the probability of A intersection B we apply the formula of the multiplication theorem the probability of a intersection b is equal to probability of a into probability of b given a and probability of a is equal to 13 over 52 but what about the probability of b given a students it is equal to 3 by 13 iski wajah kya hai dekhiye b given a ka matlab hai that we are going to obtain a face card given that it is a card of diamond ab kyunki diamond ke to 13 hi patte hain aur usme se teen wo hain jinhe hum face card kehte hain jack queen and king therefore in this reduced sample space of cards of diamond the probability of getting a face card is given by 3 by 13 now multiplying 13 by 52 by 3 by 13 we obtain probability of a intersection b is equal to 3 by 52 in a similar fashion the probability of b intersection c comes out to be 4 by 52 the point to note here is that when we talk about probability of c given b we note that we are talking about the occurrence of a king given that it is a face card to students pure deck mein 12 face cards hain jin mein se char king hain therefore this particular conditional probability is equal to 4 by 12 and putting it in its appropriate place in the formula of p of b intersection c the overall answer comes out to be 4 by 52 what about probability of a intersection c it is equal to probability of a into probability of c given a and what do we mean by c given a students it means getting a king given that it is a diamond 
तो ये तो ऑब्वियस है कि डायमंड के जो डेरा पत्ते हैं उनमें से तो एक ही किंग होता है देफोर द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सी गिवन ए इज इक्वल टू वन ओवर थर्टीन नाउ सब्सटीट्यूटिंग पी ऑफ ए इक्वल टू थर्टीन बाई फिफ्टी टू एंड पी ऑफ सी गिवन ए इज इक्वल इक्वल टू वन बाई थर्टीन इन द फॉर्मूला ऑफ द मल्टीप्लीकेशन थेरम वी ऑप्टेन प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन सी इक्वल टू वन बाई फिफ्टी टू लास्ट बट नॉट द लीस्ट वी नीड टू कंप्यूट प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए इंटरसेक्शन बी इंटरसेक्शन सी एंड स्टूडेंट्स यू विल बी इंटरेस्टेड टू नोट दैट दिस क्वान्टिटी इज इक्वल टू द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ ए इन टू द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ बी गिवन ए इन टू द प्रॉबिलिटी ऑफ सी गिवन ए इंटरसेक्शन बी दिस इज द एक्सटेंशन ऑफ द मल्टीप्लीकेशन थेरम फॉर टू इवेंट्स एंड दिस कैन बी रेड एज द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट ए अकर्स एंड बी अकर्स एंड सी अकर्स इज इक्वल टू द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट ए अकर्स इन टू द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट बी अकर्स गिवन दैट ए हैज ऑलरेडी अकर्ड इन टू द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट सी अकर्स गिवन दैट ए एंड बी हैव ऑलरेडी अकर्ड सो एज यू कैन सी इट मेक्स रीजनेबल सेंस Now, what are the quantities that we need to substitute in the right hand side of this equation? Probability of A is 13 by 52, as we have already noted. Probability of B given A is equal to 3 by 13, as already noted. Ab khwar ki je last expression pe probability of C given A intersection B. इसका मफहम यह है कि हम कह रहे हैं कि वॉट इज़ द प्रॉबिलिटी दैट वी विल हैव अ किंग गिवन दैट द कार्ड इज अ कार्ड ऑफ डायमंड एंड इज अ फेस कार्ड तो स्टूडेंट्स आप गौर कीजिए कि डायमंड्स के जो कार्ड्स हैं उनमें तीन फेस कार्ड्स हैं जैक क्वीन एंड किंग ऑफ डायमंड और इन तीनों में से देर इज ओनली वन किंग therefore the probability of this particular event is equal to 1 by 3 substituting this value in the right hand side of the equation along with the other values the overall result for probability of a intersection b intersection c comes out to be 1 by 52 and now we are in a position to apply the addition theorem that i conveyed to you a short while ago probability of a union b union c is equal to 13 by 52 plus 12 by 52 plus 4 by 52 minus 3 by 52 minus 4 by 52 minus 1 by 52 plus 1 by 52 and students upon solving this expression our result comes out to be 0.42 hence the probability that the card that is drawn is a diamond a face card or a king or for that matter any two of these simultaneously or all three of them simultaneously this probability is equal to 42% and students this is the way we apply the addition theorem and the multiplication theorem suitably in any problem according to the statement of the question students in today's lecture i discussed with you the addition theorem of probability and the multiplication theorem of probability kai dafa students confuse ho jate hain ke when to apply the addition theorem and when to apply the multiplication theorem actually agar aap ek buniyadi point yaad rakhe to aap dekhenge ke it will not be so difficult jahan kahin pe aap or ki baat kar rahe hain that the probability that a occurs or b occurs 
think of the addition theorem of probability. Or jaha kahi aap and ki baat kar rahe, the probability that A occurs and B occurs, you think of the multiplication theorem of probability. Best wishes to you in your studies of probability theory and until next time, Allah Hafiz.